Sampling the, the environment representatively is another major concern when sampling for particles. Sampling consists of aspirating particles into an inlet and transporting them to a filter or other type of collection device or sensor for detection. Both aspiration and transport are dependent on the characteristics of the particle with size being predominant and the airflow characteristics of sampling. Aspiration also depends on whether particles are being sampled from moving air such as in a duct or from still air. Special care needs to be taken to ensure representative sampling of particles in moving air, such as the air in a duct of a local exhaust system or in smokestack emissions testing depicted here. Air is pulled from the moving airstream with a sampling probe. Representative sampling is achieved when the probe is aligned with the airflow and the velocity of air entering the probe is equal to the velocity of air in the stack, isokinetic sampling. If the probe is misaligned, small particles will be sampled representatively, but the inertia of large particles will cause them to sometimes miss being sampled and consequently be undersampled. In superisokinetic sampling, the velocity of air entering the probe is higher than that in the stack. Again, the inertia of large particles will cause them to be undersampled. Conversely, in subisokinetic sampling, the velocity of air entering the probe is lower than that in the stack. Here, the inertia of large particles causes them to be oversampled. Once particles are aspirated, they need to be transported to the filter or sensor effectively. We have previously talked about particle transport through tubes when we discussed aerosol behavior. Transport through something is characterized by penetration, which is 1 minus the collection efficiency. So in this plot, a penetration of 100% means that all particles pass through the tube or are transported to the other side. And 0% means that all of the particles hit the walls of the tube and do not transport to the other side. Very small particles tend to diffuse to the walls, resulting in low penetration, so shorter tubes are better for nanoparticles. Medium-sized particles, like the orange particle, go with the flow and have high penetration efficiency. Big particles, the green particle shown in the figure, settle due to gravity and tend to collect on the bottom of the walls of the tube and have low penetration, which again favors short tubes. Bends can cause particles to deposit on walls due to inertia, so minimizing the number of bends in a tube is also favorable.